And now, uh, through the magic of a popsicle stick of puppetry, uh, we bring you the story of everything. Everything? Pretty much. God, the man, the world. It's a genesis, man. It's the beginning of everything. Okay, let's hear it. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away... I think you're telling the wrong story. What? Oh, uh, you're right. <laughs> here we go. A long time ago, right about uh, here, uh, there was God. God is a cloud? It makes about as much sense as showing him as an old man with whiskers. I see your point. The Bible says God is love, but when we tried to show him as a heart, he just looked like a valentine. Mm. Too hallmark. Right. He appeared to the Israelites as a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. The fire thing was a little scary. So we decided to go with the cloud. I think we made the right choice. I couldn't agree more. And we're calling him he. Not because God is a boy, but because the Bible calls him he. Both men and women came from God, so he isn't one or the other. You know, this show can only be so long. Right. Uh, sorry. On with the story. In the beginning, there was nothing but God. No planets, no stars, no trees, no iguanas, no toaster ovens, no kids, no eyeglasses. Chester! Nothing! Just God. And then he created. He spoke, and the universe came into being. He must have had a loud voice, because it made a big bang. <laughs> Get it? A big bang? <laughs> That's an astrophysical joke. Anyway, the earth was formed and cooled and water appeared. Then God caused the plants and the fish and animals to pop up. And then he said, watch what I'm going to do next. This is going to be great. And boom, he made a man and a woman. They didn't have any clothes, so they had to stand behind the bushes whenever anyone took their picture. What? You know, for kids' Bibles and stuff. And the creation was a done. So, why did God create? Pastor Paul? God created because he's creative. It is part of his nature to create. Okay then, why did he make men and women? Why not stop with bears and giraffes? And ponies. And ponies. I think I can answer that one, Buck. God is creative. He's also personal and relational, so he wanted to create creatures that he could relate to, that he could be friends with. It's hard to have much of a friendship with a geranium. They're pretty and all, but they're not much for conversation. The Bible says Adam and Eve were created in God's image. We're creative like God. We're personal and relational like God. We can make plans and dream dreams like God. God created us so we can be in relationship with him, but also so we could be in charge of the rest of his creation. We're in charge of the whole world? That's why Adam got to name the animals in the garden. That's also why we have to be careful not to make a mess of his creation. I've got a sudden urge to recycle. God loves us more than anything else he's ever made. And he loves it when we love him back. But it has to be our choice. What do you mean? Well, God could make us love him, but that isn't love at all. We'd be like robots, like toasters. You press the toast button, you get toast. You press the love button, you get love. My toaster doesn't have a love button. Nope, neither does a robot. Love is a choice, so God gave us a powerful, dangerous gift. He gave us the freedom to choose. Dangerous? What's so dangerous about being able to choose, Sunday school lady? We can choose to love God or we can reject him. We can choose to love each other or hurt each other. Through the years, people have chosen to do wonderful things and terrible, terrible things. Love is so important to God that the risk is worth it. God's heart aches when we choose to hurt each other and to reject him, but he still lets us choose. Whoa. That's really big. Um, so, uh, what happened to Adam and Eve? We left them standing in the bushes with no clothes. Right, oh. So God put Adam and Eve in a wonderful garden with everything they could want, and he gave them this uh, free will. That's right. But to really have free will, they needed to have a choice to make. So he put a tree in the garden and said that if they loved him and trusted him, they shouldn't eat from that tree or even touch it. Right. Here's the tree. Don't touch the tree. It's a no good. Just one tree? 
In the whole garden, just one tree they couldn't touch? How odd could that be? Well, it got harder when someone else showed up in the garden. Who showed up? Santa Claus? Elvis? Sure, why not? Santa Claus and Elvis! Chester! Sorry, uh, no. It was a serpent. You mean, like a snake? Right, uh, like a snake. But this wasn't an ordinary snake. This snake was evil. He told Eve that God was wrong, that eating from that special tree would make them as wise as God himself. Now Adam and Eve had a choice to make. Would they trust the God, or would they trust the snake? Don't trust the snake! Don't trust the snake! I've got a bad feeling about him. This is where that free will comes into play. God let Adam and Eve choose who to trust. They chose the snake. 